Is this thing on? Hey Floss Tube, it's Jessica, the Schoolhouse Stitcher. It's been a little while, almost a year. Um, I did not mean to take such a long break, but what can I say? Physical health, mental health, new responsibilities at work, just busy times. And I haven't been I haven't been stitching at home over the past year. So I really only stitched at retreats and guild meetings and stitches and such. So didn't have a whole lot to show throughout the year anyway. But certainly did not mean to take such a long break. Um, I'm hoping that I can get back into Floss Tube in 2019 because I have been sharing with everyone and, and seeing what everyone's working on. Um, I haven't been really watching Floss Tube either for the past year. I haven't been on Instagram. I've barely been on Facebook. So it's just, yeah, jumping back into everything new. Um, I do have a few finishes to show you today though. Um, just things I finished over the past year or things I FFO'd over the past year. Uh, I have some new starts, some, uh, I'll show you my active whips. I'll go over, um, it'll actually be like a little, it'll be a little whip parade. We'll go over my active whips and new starts. We'll go over the things that I've touched over, like since my last floss tube video or since my last whip parade at least. And just for fun, I'll show you the things that I haven't touched in a year and a half, two years, whatever. Just to get a good baseline for 2019. All right. And I actually started this video earlier and then my dog freaked out at the FedEx truck. So I had to pause and start over. So hopefully he'll behave and we will not receive additional deliveries in the next hour. Anyway, all right, to start out with, here is, I FFO'd a couple of those um, Jan Lin bear ornaments that I showed in my finished parade that had been sitting in pieces in my finished box for years. Um, I put these together, I sewed the, I sewed the hat onto the backing piece and then sewed, made a twisted cording hanger and sewed that onto the back and then I broke one of my rules and I used sticky felt just to try it out because it's plastic canvas and I figured it, it's not going to hurt it much. Um, sticky felt is the devil. Satan. Um, I doubt I will use sticky felt again just because it was so horrible to cut and get it right and even using an exacto knife is just, ugh, bad memories. But these are done. It was like bear with horn and bear with garland or something like that. They were little kids. I also finished up two freebies. So um, back at the beginning of the year, or when I was still stitching back in January, um, I had a habit of, I would pick one small, like tiny, like freebie small, um, and I would stitch one length of floss in it every day. And then once I had done my one length, I could pick up one of my bigger whips and work on that for the rest of the day. Um, but I made some good progress on things and actually had two finishes with that method. Um, the first one is, well, I don't know if it was the first one I finished, but it's the first one I'm going to show you, was this Shepherd's Bush freebie. Um, I still need to attach a button, but, sorry, light is shining through it because it's on some kind of 30 count R&R, &R, I think. Uh, it's a pretty open weave. And that's not gonna help because you can see that behind it too. You leave for one year, y'all. You leave for one year and suddenly you forget how to make a video. There we go. So it's a sheep. It's a free chart if you get the button. Um, I think I actually got mine. I think it was in like a shop newsletter that I received. So I don't actually have the button but I still stitched it because it was in the newsletter and I didn't know that it had a button. Whatever, I'll find something to put there. It'll be fine. And then I did the same thing with stitching one length a day to this Lizzie Kate um, All Hallows Eve freebie. And this was stitched on 30, 32 count vintage country mocha 
using two strands of anchor black. And this one I actually, because it was so, my cut was so small, I practiced using the sewing method on it. Um, I think my stitches look okay. Sewing method, not something I'm gonna do very often just because it really hurts my hand. Like it hurts this part of my hand. I think it's because I try to hold the fabric and like pull it tight like this and that puts a lot of pressure right here. So sewing method, interesting experiment, cute finish. Probably not for me. All right, the other finish I had is actually a was a finish in FFO. Um, I go to the Prim Stitchers retreat every year. This past year, um, one of the instructors was I think this is by Delaney Woods. I think. Um, I'm sorry if it's not. I it's been a while, but this was a cute little scissor keep. PSS for Prim Stitchers. And the back with the year and basically what we did was we took four pieces of cardboard and we covered one with uh, the fabric and uh, or the stitching covered the center two others with this backing fabric and then sewed those together and then took your your two pieces and sewed that together. I'm not explaining that very well, but I think you can kind of tell like four pieces, these sewn together, and then take these and sew them together like that. Anyway, it's cute. We also got this little pair of scissors um, that I keep in there. And the next, oh, almost forgot to. Um, I also, at some point during the year, stitched up two more of my Mill Hill Charmed Santas. Uh, this was a group of like seven kits I found at the store for like two bucks each um, last year. So I've been slowly stitching them up. I cannot remember the names of these, but they're in that the Charmed Santa series. Very similar. Um, this is white, this is cream, different color hats. Um, I make the hangers using leftover beads from the kit uh, because I think actually I had a I had a Mill Hill uh, uh, a Mill Hill kit that asked you to do that and I was just like that's a great idea I'm gonna do that for all my Mill Hill ornaments and so here's this. I think I've finished four or five. I think I've finished five um, in total. So almost done with that set. All right, two more finishes. These are both from what I am calling Bronchitis Battle 2018. I got very sick in November and I got sick on a Friday with bronchitis and I did not, I was not able to go into work until the following Friday. Uh, like I tried to go into work one day like on Wednesday because by then I just sounded bad but I was no longer contagious and they said you sound disgusting please go home <laughs> so I did a lot of stitching um the first thing I did was I think it's the first thing I did I started and finished Plum Street Samplers a bowl full of Mary's this is Mary one um, when I got this this came with the chart and the threads I think you can get it with just the chart now but I could be wrong um, but yeah, it's cute. My whatever color this, I forget what color the reindeer calls for. Mine was a very weird variegation. Um, so if you notice that two of the legs like light dark light dark so it looks like two of the legs are in the front and two are in the back that was on purpose because I was done I had stitched down to there and I was like this reindeer is gonna be really stripy um, I was trying to find a way to mitigate that that's what I came that's what I came up with I'll take it oh and McKenna says it looks like the reindeer is pooping so that's what I will see whenever I look at this and this is stitched on, 
I think it's 40 Count Runestone by Dixie Sampler. But I could be wrong. I was not really keeping up with fabrics and stuff. I was just happy to be stitching something. So, I'll take it. And then the last thing I finished this year was something I started at the Prim Stitchers Retreat. Uh, I actually purchased this kit there. It's called Pennsylvania Prim Friends, and it's by Summer House Stitch Works. Um, this will be FFO'd into this hoop, but I have not done it yet, so you have the pieces. But that's what that looks like. And again, it was just a limited edition kit. Uh, she usually has one um, at each Prim Stitchers Retreat. So I picked up this one. Um, this is stitched on 32 count Rin from Picture This Plus with the classic, called for classic color works. I love the way this looks. For some reason, I had a really hard time getting into it. So honestly, if I hadn't got bronchitis, um, this would probably still be a whip instead of a finish. I lied. I have, to, I have a couple more finishes to show you. <laughs> this is more productive than I thought. Okay, this is one of the, this is the first um, Little House New York's Farmhouse Christmas block. I cannot remember what it's called, but it doesn't matter. This is stitched on, I think this is a 32 count raw by um, Spygart using the called for threads. I finished this back in January or January, February, I think. February. Um, and really love it. And had this grand plan that I was going to do. I'm going to finish these as the ornaments, not as the, the one piece. Uh, but I had this grand plan that I was going to stitch them as they came out, like I did with the Summer Schoolhouse series. That didn't happen, clearly. That's the only one I have because I basically finished that and then I stopped stitching for months. But there we go. And then this next one is not a recent finish, but I don't think I showed it in my finish parade. I could be wrong, maybe I did, but I came across it and realized I had completely forgotten that I did these. So I figured I'd show them. Uh, this is from the Prairie Schooler book. I think it's called Oh Christmas Tree. And it has a series of, um, I think, eight triangle Christmas tree shaped things. But one of them is, or four of them make up the 12 days of Christmas. Uh, so this is, where's the first one? Here's the first one. So this is a partridge in a pear tree. Two turtle doves, three French hens. Sorry, this is a big piece of fabric. There we go. And then you saw four, five, and six. I, I just showed you the same thing. Up, up, Jessica, up. Forget how to make a video. Four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, seven swans of swimming, eight ladies milking, nine ladies dancing, and ten, eleven, twelve. And I will eventually finish these into the Christmas tree shapes, uh, like they are, like um, they're shown on the chart. Those are all of my finishes. Now we will get into my active whips. So the first thing I'll show you, let's go over the whips that you've already seen, but that I've actually made significant progress on. This first one is the Blackbird Designs English Garden Sewing Bag, um, which was a gift from a very kind Floss Team viewer. And I have been working on this ever since I received it. And it is one of my priorities to get finished this year. I don't have a picture of what it will look like finished. If I can find one, I'll insert that in here. 
Um, but this is where I've gotten so far. I'm about halfway done. And like I said, I would really like to finish that this year. Um, I try to prioritize gifts and um, like charts that I, charts that were gifted to me or charts that I requested or um, things that people are letting me borrow. Uh, because I don't want I don't want to get those and then have them languish in the back of my whip pile. So that's a priority to finish this year. The other one you have seen before that has significant progress is Plum Street Sampler's Thistle Pocket. This is where it will look like what it will look like when it's finished. I think the last time you saw this, I had a roof, and that was it. And now I have almost the entire house. Well, the entire the house part is done, but then you do the windows and the door. I very nearly ran out of floss on this. I was doing floss chicken at the Minnesota retreat because I did not think I was gonna have enough of this gray brown color to finish the house. So I would do like, once I got to the top of the door, I would do one length of floss over here and then one length over here and one length over here and one length over here until I finally reached the bottom because I figured if I ran out of floss, like, you know, two or three rows before the bottom, I would just stitch it in a different color and say, oh, the house has a foundation, or the house has a porch. No big. But fortunately, I had enough and did not run out, so that was not necessary. Right. The other whips that are active are four new starts. So the first one I started was A Blackbird Designs out of print chart called the October 31st drum pin cushion and I'm just going to show you my working copy of the picture that should give you some idea of what it looks like it basically just has like quick motifs and says October 31st on the top and this is the fabric or fabric and I am stitching this on the linen and with the threads that came in the kit. Here's where I've gotten so far. I started this right before I went to Minnesota and I thought, oh, I'm gonna take this with me and I'm gonna finish it at the retreat because it's so small and it's just one color and it'll be easy to stitch on and I'll actually have a finish and blah, blah, blah. I get up to Minnesota, I pull it out I have like, you know, my threads, my needle parked up in the corner. I stitch that length. I go to plot another length of thread. I left the thread sitting on my end table at home. So no, I did not stitch on that or finish that at the Minnesota retreat. And I did not finish that in time for Halloween. Next year, this year, this year. But at the Minnesota retreat, they had a freebie table. And I know people have talked about the Shepherd's Bush and um, Just Nan charts that were on the, or kits and such that were on the table. I was looking through and normally Shepherd's Bush and Just Nan are not really my cup of tea. Um, they make beautiful designs, but it's just not really my aesthetic. Um, but I did see this one, Holly and Ivy. And I love this one with the Quaker motifs at the top and just the colors and the over one words. And actually, I had looked at this one um, when a store here in Atlanta was going out of business. I had looked at it at 75% off and I thought, no, I might never stitch it. I regretted that ever since. So imagine how happy I was to be browsing through this freebie table and see Holly and Ivy. It came with all the silks, it came with the fabric, it came with the buttons, everything, fully kitted. So I started that at the retreat, and here's where I've gotten so far. And, sorry, I just had a moment of paranoia that my linen is not long enough, but I'm pretty sure I measured it, and I think it is. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. We're good. <laughs> Crisis averted. Um, so here's what it looks like right now. 
this is all done over one. Um, lots of specialty stitches in this line of green and in the gold here. Um, yeah, this is a super, super easy stitch. Um, it's one thread over two on, I think this is a 32 count linen. Um, I actually think this is, a, I'm pretty sure it's a 32 count or 30 count um, weeks parchment linen, which normally I don't like weeks, but this one's okay. My next new start, this was, um, I started this on New Year's Eve, and this is a kit that I've had in my stash for a little while. I saw another um, stitcher posted on Stitch Mania and loved it and immediately had to go to eBay to find it, and that was a couple years ago and just kind of started it. It is Lace Partridge by Bisilla. It's an out of print kit. Now, the kit came with this horrible red Ada and that's very stiff and an icky white floss. Well, I didn't use that. I'm just using DMC white on a scrap of this beautiful red linen in 32 count for my stash. I don't know what color this is, but based on the feel of it, I'm wondering if this is Cranberry Bog by r, &R Reproductions. If it is, it's really nice, and I have enough to do Blackbird Designs, Blackbird's Winter Delivery on the back. So, but this is where I've gotten so far. Oh, this way. This is where I've gotten so far. For comparison. And this is my one length a day project. So, I every day I just put in... Um, I did a little bit more on New Year's Eve, but every day since then I just put in like one length of floss and I'll just keep doing that until it's done. Last active whip slash new start. Um, I was on Instagram and I saw that Jen from Jen Stitching Knit had started, uh, was doing her year of uh, Brenda Gervais. So she was starting one with a needle and thread pattern every month. And for January, she had started um, Brick House Sampler. Well, I have had that in my stash for a little while. I think I picked it up at um, Katrina Lynn Boyd Retreat in Marietta last fall. And I love, love, love it. So I saw her post. I immediately thought, I have that chart. I wonder if I have any of the threads. I know I have fabric. All this is cross stitch fabric right here. So I was like, I wonder if I have, I wonder if I have enough to start that. So I went digging through and I had all of the colors except three. Unfortunately, one of them is the house color, but I did have enough to get a pretty good, um, a decent start. So I started with the door and I'm working on the eggshell color, did the plant. This is on a 40 count. Um, Country Mocha by Zweigart and is stitched using the Caldwell Floss. It doesn't look quite this dark in real life. Um, the light's a little off. But that's okay. My husband helped me pick out the fabric. I think he did a really excellent job because um, even though it's showing up dark in the video, it really, really looks good. Especially this wood rose color. I love that color on this, on this fabric. All right, we are now getting into the pile of stuff that I am pretty sure I have touched over the last year and a half or since my last whip parade, but haven't really made significant progress on it. Last year for my birthday, um, this was one of the last things I stitched on before I stopped stitching altogether. Um, several people were starting His Eyes on the Sparrow by Heartstring Samplery, and I'm a little joiner as you can see from the brick house sow. So I said, yes, I want to do that too. I have that chart. I'm going to go buy all the floss and I'm going to buy some fabric and I'm going to start it. This is what it will look like. It's really big. This is what I've done so far. <laughs> I've done one flower. 
in the corner. It's a beautiful flower. I love this color. It's on 40 count vintage country mocha again. Um, I love it. It's beautiful. I just stopped stitching and then haven't picked it back up yet and need to do that. It's not going to be finished this year. Heck no. But I could probably make some good progress on it. And it is being stored in my very own Mommily bag. Yes, Emily made me a Star Wars bag. I love it. The back and the inside. I love it. One of my very favorite project bags. Diana made me, I also have a Diana bag, which is sitting near me. It does not have a current whip in it, but it does have some kits. Um, Diana loves these uh, Ladies Prim Society Blackbird Designs charts, so I'm storing them all in my Diana bag as a reminder that if I finish one, I need to, <laughs> I need to see if she wants to stitch it too. But I love, love this. It's so cute. Other whips. These are in no particular order from here on out. Um, the others were in roughly the order I started them. Now it's just a free-for-all. We have one of my oldest current whips, which is My Big Toe Designs, The Apostles' Creed. I was stitching this. It looks like this. I'm doing this one, the big one with all the colors. Um, I was stitching this in memory of my grandpa because he was Methodist and they said the Apostles' Creed every Sunday. Um, so that's just a memory from growing up. And here's where I am. The colors are a lot more, um, a lot more vibrant than they appear on the, the picture of the chart. You have this green and This brown is a lot deeper. The golds are a lot more, a lot more vibrant. Okay. And this is stitched on a 32 count. It's a 32 count by Dixie Sampler. I think it was called like Coconut or something. I have it written down somewhere, but I do not have those notes with me. Next up, I have the, what is this called? It's one of the stockings by Dimensions. It's one of the Santa stockings. I cannot find the name. Chart B, that's not helpful at all. Anyway, it's a Santa stocking, as is pretty obvious. Ugh, it's dirty. Um, yeah, I know, it's taped, whatever. It's gonna be cut off and made into a stocking, so it doesn't matter. Um, I've got this. I think last time I showed this, I had this part. So I've done this and this. Still a long way to go on it, though. And you can tell, this poor thing has been rolled up so long that it has like fold lines. It's dirty. <sighs> Honestly. Yeah, my goal was to finish that in a year and then do my, um, do a stocking for my husband and finish that another year. I'm like, oh, in two years we can have stockings and it'll be so cute. When will I learn? Alright. The next one is one that I had started for a freebie challenge. This is uh, Happy Spring by the Snowflower Diaries. Um, I will try, I only have a really crappy picture, um, but you can kind of tell. It's like an egg shape. There's flowers and a bunny in the middle, and she's wearing a little um, pink dress. I have stitched probably, I've stitched most of her dress. This will probably be next on my um, 
well, either one of two things will happen. Either I'm going to get really inspired and think that's going to be a quick finish and I can knock it out um, and I'll do it in like a weekend. Or I'm going to finish the lace partridge and then that'll become my one stitch, uh, one length a day until it's done. Next up. This is by the Primitive Hair. It was in, it's called Be Happy. I am just stitching this part, not this. Um, this was in the June 2016 issue of Just Cross Stitch Magazine. Looks like this. And here is how far I have gotten. Finished the beeha, the bee scap, one of the bees, one of the flowers. Um, little things here, motifs here and there. I would really like to finish this one this year. I think that's, I think that's definitely doable. Um, the problem is it's on, well, not a problem, but it's on a um, a thirty count R and R, uh, which has a, a more open weave. So I have to be really, I have to be really careful when I'm stitching on thirty count R and R because um, my stitches tend to get very wonky if I don't watch them. So I think that's why this is taking a little bit longer than it would ordinarily take is because I'm being super paranoid about my stitches. On the other hand, that 32 count r, &R that I showed that the lace partridge is on, that stitch is amazingly. I love that fabric. Um, if I could get more of that fabric, unfortunately they don't make cranberry bog anymore, but if I could get more of that, I would definitely be down for that because I love it. All right, next up we have Star of Wonder by Carol Emmer. This is, looks like this. I think she released this as a separate leaflet, but this is also in the November, December 2010 issue of Just Cross Stitch. Sorry, quick chart of flash. So it looks like that. And this is my whopping start. Or progress to date. I have a guy's shoulder. I just really liked the colors. It's very vibrant. Um, this is stitched on 32 count. What's it called for? I think I stitched on what it's called for. Steel gray, possibly, or blue spruce. Not blue spruce. Whatever the other blue one is. You know what? It's Swigart. It's kind of a blue gray. That's all I got. I prepped a little bit for this video. I did not go that into detail with writing down like all the fabrics and everything for, for every project. Um, I mean, we're lucky that you're lucky. <laughs> I went through and opened all the zip bags beforehand and made sure that most of them had pictures. That's kind of where we're at right now. The other one, and this is another one that I would love to get finished this year, and I love it every every time I pull it out, I think that is so beautiful why I have a stitch on And that is Garden Sampler by Rosewood Manor. This was available as a PDF download from Perchners. Um, it's kind of hard to find on their site. I think you really have to um, I think you have to search for gar like garden sampler PDF or garden sampler download or something like that. Um, but I am stitching this on the called for the 32 count Valor by Picture This Plus, which is a beautiful green color, um, even though it's not going to show up well with my lighting here today. And here's where I have gotten. So, bad start. I'm probably um, I'm about a quarter of the way done, probably. But the colors are so beautiful. This is stitching in Valdani threads. Um, I bought the, I think I bought the six ply and I'm stitching it two over two. Um, Valdani is kind of a love it or hate it. I really love it. Uh, I don't mind that it's a bit, that the, um, the threads a bit thicker and a bit fuzzier, 
Um, I think it really works for this design, but other people absolutely hate that and will not stitch with it. So keep that in mind. If your project calls for Valdani, maybe try a small project first just to make sure you like it before you commit to buying, you know, this many. Because they're not cheap. The next two projects, these are things I started in 2017, I think, or 28. No, I started them last year, I think, as part of a, um, God, maybe it was 2017. Lose my mind. Um, as part of a, a freebie February thing. Uh, this is supposed to be the January Flower of the Month by LMR Stroh. Um, if you want to see a view of what this actually looks like, go to Jessie Marie Does Stuff um, because she, I think she's actually finished this one. I don't even know if this is the right way up, but this is what I've done. <laughs> that tiny bit of green. This is on 40 count white by Zweigart uh, using the Cod 4 DMCs. And I would eventually like to stitch all 12 as separate pieces and have um, have a little seasonal, have my double be, uh, be seasonal, but you know, a long way to go on that. And the final whip that you either haven't seen or has new progress on it, this is one you haven't seen. Um, this is by Chatelaine. This is the Christmas tree man, uh, mandala freebie from years ago. It's no longer available as a freebie, unfortunately. Uh, but this, you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like with four Christmas trees. And then um, the intricate, like this is like a garland around here. And then the more intricate stitching. Um, this is my whopping start on 32 count Water Lily by Weichel. And it's upside down. This way. Not that it matters, but I know which way my stitches usually go. This is another one I would really like to get back to just because the colors the colors are very, the greens are very pretty and very soothing. Like, it's all these blue-greens. Um, I really like these colors. Someday, someday. Alright, finally, we have the whips that have not been touched in quite some time. First up, hasn't even been rolled off the scroll frame, is of course, and they send. Um, I may, actually maybe I did a little bit more since I showed you this, I don't know. Um, I'm still stuck in the cloud. I have to do down here, and up here continue the border yeah that and that's just on like the top half of page one or something so quite a bit to do this is stitched on 40 count um lamb's wool by watch out watch out um don't really recommend it normally because it's very very stiff like you kind of get an idea of how crunchy it is from that but I needed a I need a full yard because this um, in, on 40 count this takes a, uh, a skinny half which is if a fat half is 27 by 32 or 36 something like that then this is 32 by 52 I think or 36 by 52 something like that um, so I needed a full yard length, but only half, uh, width. so I just bought a full yard of it, and, um, I like the way it looks on the color, and actually it's not so bad, um, it's not so bad on the, the scroll frame, so I'll probably always use scroll frame for white shirt linen, just because it saves my sanity. Next up 
is this by Barbara Sestock is Spring Bouquet. It is in the Spring 2015 issue of Cross Stitch New York Magazine. Here's what it looks like. Here's what the magazine looks like. I am stitching this with Butternut Squash by The Journal Art on 40 count um, white by Zweigart. And let me figure out which way it goes. Maybe. Yes. This is how far I am today. Not very far. It's showing up a little pale here. In real life, it's more of a... Um, it's more of a like darker daffodil color because I wanted these to look like um, I wanted them to look like the daffodils that I grew up with on my family's farm, not the uh, the stripy look that's in there. I don't like orange daffodils; they should be yellow. I have opinions about the weirdest things sometimes. I swear. Next up, and this is one I really want to get back to because I love this so much. This is Winter Wind Sampler by Plum Street Samplers. And it is in the January, February 2011 Just Cross Stitch. But alas, I have done Wind. Have not touched this since I started it. And it's on this beautiful, beautiful lakeside linen. Um, it is a Silver Sky Vintage Quilt, Vintage Quick Silver from Lakeside Linens. Um, so it's really pretty. It's um, mostly gray. It has just a faint hint of purple in there. Love, 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 love linen. Sorry, apparently my video, this video is going to have more dead air than the previous ones because I don't have as much to talk about this time and I'm out of practice. So what are you going to do? You'll just have to deal with me being quiet while I put my projects back in their bags so that I don't end up with an unholy mess around me. Okay, next up, a lot of people started this one um, after I showed it in my first whip parade, and I was really happy to see that because it's such a beautiful design. This is Peace on Earth by Cottage Garden Samplings. It is in the Cross Stitch Needlework Winter 2015. But I only have, I'm stitching it on 40 count vintage country mocha. I only have a very, very small start like a one snowflake and a little bit of brick. Because I started this for um, a magazine stitch along where I started like one magazine project every day for 15 days in January. And I haven't touched it since. So, I think it's been a couple years since that one's seen the light of day. Next one I have, this is, I take it back, I think this is my oldest whip. Um, this is a free Santa pattern that I got from Novali, Novali, N-O-V-A-L-E-E. -E. Um, this is no longer available. It was one of those where you had to stitch the first part and send her a picture, and then she would send you the rest of the chart. So I stitched the yellow part and sent that to her, and she sent me the chart. Um, not quite halfway done with this. This is stitched on, I think this is 28 count raw um, cashel by Zweigart. So you can tell how old it is because I don't stitch on 28 count anymore. But that's what that will look like. I need to pull out the, I need to pull out the red and white band right here because I stitched the red first and then the white, and you should always stitch white first and then the red because otherwise your white will turn pink as it pulls up against the red thread. So 
Um, yeah, it's a, it's a cute design. It's not necessarily my thing anymore, but I still really want to pin it. Ooh, needle. Is this stuck in the stitches at the back? Um, I still really want to do want to finish it. I think it would make a cute pillow. I can get away with... I, I can be down with a slightly cutesier style at Christmas or Halloween than I would any other time of the year. So. How many more? Two more. All right. This one, I do not have a picture because it's from a digital issue of magazine um, but this is Teresa Winsler's um, old red bar or old barn this is from just cross stitch October 1996 and it's stitched on 32 count cream by Zweigart and this is what I have so far so this is basically the side of the barn um, and it's quite a lot bigger than this but uh, there's so many blended threads that this is something I really have to be in the mood to stitch um, because for me for blended threads it's hard to get things to lay right and look right um, and I'm really obsessive about having neat stitches so I have to be in almost a meditative mood to stitch this one because I have to really get into it last one this was also for the magazine thing I did. This is Folk Eggs by Prairie Schooler. I am doing this one up at the top. Here are the other two. That one's cute. Um, this is in the March-April 2013 issue of Just Cross Stitch. Which also has this super cute design by By the Bay. And I have stitched this. And this is 30, just 32 count black by Zweigart. I think I had actually started to stitch like down and go toward the bottom. And I was, I stitched a decent amount on it and I was really unhappy with how my stitches looked. So I got mad and I tore them out. I have a problem y'all. Really obsessed with the with the neat stitches. Speaking of neat stitches, if you have never seen Emily C's work, yeah, I don't know how she does it. She like she stitches on the 36 count with two strands of floss over two threads, which for me, whenever I try that, it looks really crowded and really crappy, but hers look beautiful and perfectly gridded and everything. And she uses legs of floss that are like as big as she is, and it never frays. I don't know how you do it, Emily. Don't know how you do it. But I need some of your um, neat stitching, neat stitches uh, mojo over here with these with these 32 count projects. <laughs> 30 and 32 count because I keep ripping things out and not making progress on them. But, all right. I am now surrounded by a pile of bags that I need to put up. But I think I've shown you everything. And at least, if nothing else, I actually made a video. I sat down and made a video for the first time in almost a year. So, yes, accomplishment. Um, all right, I'm gonna head, I'm gonna clean stuff up. I'm gonna sit down and do some stitching today and do a little bit of stitching the rest of the weekend. Um, and I hope to catch you on Instagram. I'm on there as Schoolhouse Stitcher. Um, have actually started posting photos some more, so yay, small victories. And if you are going to the, I mentioned I went to the Minnesota Stitch Retreat. If you are going to the Arizona Stitch Retreat that McKenna's putting on, I'll see you there. I'm super excited about it. I'm also going to be at the uh, Prim Stitcher Society Retreat just a couple weeks after that um, in Memphis, I believe. So I'll see you there. I feel like there was something else that was just popped into my head and it slipped away just as quickly. Clearly, I'm out of practice with this. But it was great being back here, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.